Welcome to AFOQT Test Prep Online Lesson Series. In this video, we will go over 15 questions on aviation information for the AFOQT test. To practice more, download the AFOQT tutoring from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Question 1. For a stabilized hover, the forces A. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag are all in equilibrium. B. Lift equals drag. C. Thrust equals lift. D. All of the above. The answer is A. In a stabilized hover, the forces acting on the helicopter must balance. Lift equals weight to maintain altitude, and thrust equals drag to prevent horizontal movement. This equilibrium ensures the helicopter remains stationary in the air. While options B and C describe partial equilibriums, only option of fully captures the balance of all four forces required for a stable hover. Question 2. In an aircraft engine, the compressed air from the compressor is heated by burning fuel in the combustion chamber and then allowed to expand through the turbine, whose exhaust is then expanded in the propelling nozzle, where it is accelerated to a high speed to provide thrust. What type of engine is this? A. The ramjet. B. Rocket. C. The pulse jet. D. The gas turbine engine. The answer is D. A gas turbine engine operates by compressing air, mixing it with fuel for combustion, and then expanding the hot gases through a turbine and nozzle to produce thrust. This process is characteristic of jet engines, including turbojets and turbofans. Ramjets, rockets, and pulse jets operate differently and do not use a compressor turbine system. Thus, the described engine is a gas turbine engine. Question 3. All stresses imposed on the aircraft wings are transmitted to which area? A. The fuselage structure. B. The outer layer or shield of the wings. C. The surrounding atmosphere. D. The stress releaser plugs. The answer is A. The wings of an aircraft are designed to transfer all aerodynamic stresses, including lift, drag, and bending moments, to the fuselage. The fuselage acts as the central supporting structure, distributing these forces throughout the aircraft. The outer layer of the wings, atmosphere, and stress releaser plugs do not bear or transmit these stresses. Thus, the fuselage is the primary load-bearing structure for wing stresses. Question 4. Which of the following are the four forces that act on an aircraft in flight? A. Lift, friction, thrust, and drag. B. Aerodynamics, weight, propulsion, and drag. C. Gravity, lift, thrust, and drag. D. Lift, tension, propulsion, and resistance. The answer is C. These are the four fundamental forces acting on an aircraft in flight. Gravity, weight, pulls the aircraft downward, lift opposes gravity and keeps the aircraft airborne, thrust propels the aircraft forward, and drag opposes thrust, creating resistance. These forces must be balanced for stable and controlled flight. Question 5. What is the name of an aircraft's body part that holds the cargo, passengers as well as provides a base for the other aircraft parts? A. Cargo compartment. B. Cockpit. C. Main body. D. Fuselage. The answer is D. The fuselage is the central body of an aircraft that houses the cockpit, passengers, cargo, and essential systems. It also serves as the structural base to which wings, tail, and engines are attached fuselage. The cargo compartment and cockpit are specific sections within the fuselage, while the main body is not a standard aviation term. Thus, the fuselage is the correct answer. Question 6. The hub and swashplate of a helicopter are the principal components of what units? A. Anti-flapping restrainers. B. Rotary head. C. Tail rotor. D. Droop restrainers. The answer is B. The hub and swashplate are key components of the rotary head in a helicopter. The hub connects the rotor blades to the mast, 
while the swash plate enables pilot control by translating cyclic and collective inputs into blade movement. Together, they manage lift, thrust, and directional control, making them essential to the helicopter's rotor system. Question 7. The flight control surfaces on a simple wing include what controls? A. Ailerons and trailing edge flaps. B. Ailerons and leading edge flaps. C. Edge flaps and ailerons. D. Trailing and leading edge flaps. The answer is A. A simple wing's flight control surfaces include ailerons and trailing edge flaps. Ailerons, located near the wingtips, control roll by moving in opposite directions. Trailing edge flaps, positioned along the wing's rear edge, increase lift and drag for takeoff and landing. These components enhance maneuverability and improve aerodynamic performance during different flight phases. Question 8. What is the purpose of the false spar in some aircraft wings? A. To help carry the load. B. To help transmit the air load from the wing. C. To support the ailerons and flaps. D. To give the wings bending strength. The answer is C. The false spar in some aircraft wings primarily serves to support the ailerons and flaps. Unlike the main spars, which carry the primary structural loads, the false spar provides attachment points for these control surfaces. This design allows for independent movement of the ailerons and flaps while maintaining the wing's overall structural integrity and functionality. Question 9. What primary force is at work on the fuselage when an aircraft is at rest? A. Tension. B. Torsion. C. Compression. D. Bending. The answer is D. When an aircraft is at rest, the primary force acting on the fuselage is bending. The aircraft's weight, including fuel, passengers, and cargo, causes the fuselage to bend slightly under gravitational force. Additionally, the landing gear supports the structure at specific points, leading to bending stresses as the fuselage resists sagging between these support locations. Question 10. What term is used when a helicopter's main rotor is turning and no lift is being produced by the rotor blades? A. Ground idle. B. Zero thrust. C. Angle of attack. D. Flat pitch. The answer is D. Flat pitch refers to the condition when a helicopter's main rotor is turning, but no lift is being produced by the rotor blades. In this state, the blades are positioned at a neutral angle, generating minimal aerodynamic forces. This setting is typically used during startup, shutdown, or ground operations to prevent unintended lift or movement. Question 11. By what means is lift controlled in a helicopter? A. By increasing and decreasing the rotor speed. B. By increasing and decreasing the engine speed. C. By increasing and decreasing the pitch or angle of attack of the rotor blades. D. None of the above. The answer is C. In a helicopter, lift is controlled by increasing or decreasing the pitch, angle of attack, of the rotor blades. This is achieved using the collective control which changes the pitch of all blades simultaneously. A higher pitch increases lift by generating more aerodynamic force, while a lower pitch reduces lift. Rotor speed generally remains constant during normal flight. Question 12. On an unsymmetrical airfoil, in what direction does the center of pressure move when the angle of attack changes? A. Rearward only. B. Forward only. C. Fore and aft. D. Inboard and outboard. The answer is C. On an unsymmetrical airfoil, the center of pressure moves fore and aft as the angle of attack changes. When the angle of attack increases, the center of pressure moves forward, generating more lift. Conversely, when the angle of attack decreases, it shifts rearward. This movement affects aerodynamic stability and control, making it important in aircraft design. Question 13. What is a symmetrical airfoil? A. An airfoil that has a greater camber on the upper surface than on the lower surface. B. An airfoil that has less camber on the upper surface than on the lower surface. C. 
An airfoil that has a variable center of pressure. D. An airfoil that has a fixed center of pressure. The answer is D. A symmetrical airfoil has equal curvature on both the upper and lower surfaces, resulting in a fixed center of pressure. Unlike an unsymmetrical airfoil, its aerodynamic characteristics remain stable regardless of the angle of attack. This design is commonly used in helicopter rotor blades and aerobatic aircraft, where balanced aerodynamic forces are essential for maneuverability and control. Question 14. When an aircraft in flight increases its angle of attack, which of the following actions is accomplished? A. The aircraft pivots on its longitudinal axis. B. The aircraft pivots on its lateral axis. C. The aircraft will turn to the left. D. The aircraft will turn to the right. The answer is B. When an aircraft increases its angle of attack, it pivots on its lateral axis. The lateral axis runs wingtip to wingtip, and movement around this axis is called pitch. Increasing the angle of attack raises the nose of the aircraft, increasing lift but also drag. This movement is controlled by the elevators on the horizontal stabilizer. Question 15. What causes the most of the lift of an airfoil? A. The decrease in pressure over the airfoil. B. The increase in pressure over the airfoil. C. The speed of the air striking the front of the airfoil. D. The difference in air pressure on the upper and lower surfaces of the airfoil. The answer is D. Most of the lift generated by an airfoil comes from the difference in air pressure between its upper and lower surfaces. Faster airflow over the curved upper surface creates lower pressure, while slower airflow beneath results in higher pressure. This pressure difference produces an upward force, lift, allowing the aircraft to stay aloft, following Bernoulli's principle and Newton's third law. To practice more, download the AFOQT tutoring from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. If you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you can request a tutor from the link below.